Hi, I'm Barry John, and welcome back to Let's Play Overload. I have two co-pilots, and I'll let them introduce themselves. I'm Laylight, Dimensional Traveler. Uh, I'm Speedball, Infradimensional Traveler. Across the sea of stars. Well, welcome back, Speedball. Long time no see. So, uh, we have... Level 15 is the real last level of Overload. Level 16 is basically a victory lap. Uh, and it opens with our uh, lovely uh, Cantor giving us this little allegorical spiel about the nature of the Sovereigns. Uh, it goes on for a couple of minutes, and as the goes on, uh, I like how the voice changes happen to show, you know, Cantor finally giving in. She woke. She called out to her sisters, but they did not hear. She tried to wake them, but was too weak. So she taught the sorcerer how to build a magic door. The sorcerer's apprentice, a trickster and rogue, found the second queen. Oh, you mean Mickey Mouse? She locked her away aboard a ship, sailing off to an evil land, where the sorcerer's enemies schemed against him. But this second queen, she too was given food and drink. As she woke as the ship sailed on. She was a clever queen and soon learned the language of captors. She made the captain and crew forget. They could not remember where they had come from, where they were going. And so they sailed back to the land of ice. And that explains what would happen to the Iberia. And confused their words so they would not be known. She was also an angry queen, unhappy to be held prisoner in this manner. And she vowed to destroy all the people in all the cities in her path, so they could do no harm to her or her sisters ever again. She told the slaves to rise up and kill their masters. And so they did. The sorcerer finished the magic door and entered with the first queen. Now she was home, and a great feast was laid out before her. She ate and drank and grew stronger, until at last she could speak to her sisters marooned across the sea. And this is how the third queen woke, lost on the farthest moon. The three sisters were together once again, though far apart. And they were pleased with these new lands. Far off places with strange names. The people there would join the others, the trillions upon trillions. Conquered, annexed, devoured. As the magic door opened on the farthest moon, their armies charged across the frontier, hungry for glory. This is how it ends. And that is the final plot twist. Our AI on the Iberia has been the Sovereign who's been manipulating us into attempting to destroy everything. Hmm. That's disappointing, but perhaps, uh... Well... We aren't out of the game yet. There's still something else we can do. Yep. It'll probably involve flying in six degrees of freedom and shooting something. <laughs> Where are you going? Forward. Now, a queen can move orthogonally or diagonally. But a knight can attack from an angle a queen cannot cover. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. And even a mighty queen can fall to a pawn. <laughs> One of the things I find interesting is that it's suggested that the uh, what? three alien worlds we visit, uh, Cyranus, sorry, Cygnus, Lyranicus, and Volpecular, 
Uh, it's suggested that uh, in some of the ancillary materials that these are the three home systems of the sovereigns, just as you know, Cantor would be, uh, you know, from Seoul. Ah, yes, the Overload uh, light novels. Sorry, if you, I'm running up against the walls here because my guide is telling me, hey, there's secret passages in some of these walls. I'm like, well, where the hell are they? Yeah, thanks for the info, game facts. <laughs> Actually, I'm using a walkthrough found on Steam. Uh, same thing. The names change. The atmosphere doesn't. Although I do miss the little ASCII diagrams at the top of walkthroughs. <laughs> <laughs> A lost art. Oh, yeah. So, um, that core's remaining counter there, isn't that what we saw at the end of the last few levels? Did we just find one of those cores right off the start? Pretty much. It's one of those things where we have to trigger all of the cores in order to open up the uh, secret passage, or not the secret passage, to open up the doors into the final boss room. Spoilers, there's a boss. Oh man. Well, I'm glad that this game continues the tradition of the Descent series of really great music. And here I was hoping all we had to do is shoot a switch and go home. <laughs> they wouldn't make it that easy, would they? Well, technically, we are going to shoot a switch and go home. It's just that the switch is going to have a lot of health and it's going to be shooting back at us. <laughs> and the switch is inside the boss. No, I have no idea how my fusion cannon made that turn either. I'm just going to accept it. Is it a... Eh, there's something over there. Does it have minor homing, or...? Yep, I upgraded it to have that. At least there don't seem to be too many hitscan enemies uh, in, in Overload. I still bitterly resent those mining bots that would... <laughs> yeah, aliens are, they've got the straightforward, like, fusion-based weaponry, um, either in, like, uh, packet form or in beam form. No, it takes true human ingenuity and cruelty to come up with the concept of a cloaked driller. <laughs> Which is why I'm very glad that the only cloaked enemy in this game is a melee enemy. Yeah, no, we didn't run into any uh, cloaked uh, homing missile hulks. I'm surprised. But yeah, you didn't miss out on too much. It looks like um, the enemy roster in this level is pretty similar to the last two. Yeah. It's a little unfortunate that there wasn't, you know, real room for something that's truly alien in design. It's di it would be difficult to represent in a way that would not make these hallways more confusing. Like, these things are usually pretty, um, radially symmetrical about a central core. One thing that might help make it a more, like, alien design is if you had, like, two heads offset diagonally or something. Some more asymmetrical designs, basically. Exactly. Yeah, or an asymmetrically designed enemy robot drone might make it look like uh, it was assembled by a very buggy factory that's going... Exactly. Or um, taking some inspiration from one of those um, Descent 2 enemies that was one of those upgraded uh, scout drones. Um, it could have one weapon on one wing and a different weapon on the other wing. Oh yeah, huh? Well, I 
think this isn't uh, an alien facility. I think this is, uh, we've invaded a, a rave club, but that's okay. Robots are not allowed to dance, so we have to kill them all. I believe that rave clubs would install teleporters in them if they could. <laughs> There'd be liability issues, sure, but eventually it would catch on. I, I, although speaking of you know, bright lights, you know, I am officially sick and tired of purple at this point. Yeah, there's a little too much purple here. Yeah, we've been in two indoor environments. We had a brief cave interlude in one of the levels. Um, I'm surprised we haven't seen any, like, I don't know, um, industrial areas or, like, liquid tubes or anything like that. It kind of does look a little too similar to the prior couple levels. It I mean, looks like we're like... either trapped inside Tron or possibly uh, Saints Row 3. <laughs> yeah, or like an airport, but without any windows and more neon lighting. Yeah! Well, I mean, that is the one big failing with Overload, is that it lacks the visual like diversity of the previous games. And I hate to compliment Descent 3, but at least it changed up the color palette on occasion. Yeah, for all its faults, Descent 3 had set pieces. This game, it tries sometimes to do that, but, um, like, you need to make special effort to do that kind of thing, to build a specialized room with a specialized, um, asset or piece of furniture in the middle of it. Um, because if you don't do that, then you wind up with a whole bunch of corridors that might be textured differently from one another, but still look a little samey. All the, this room with all of the teleporters on the sides... Uh, is this just like the Scooby-Doo hallway where everyone keeps running into the hall uh, doors on the sides and coming out of different doors? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, I go through a couple of them later on trying to figure out where the last core is, and it's just... It's... In terms the of... The enemies don't seem to make much use of them either. Like, they'll go in them by accident, not by... on purpose. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, the AI isn't programmed to use it. Like, they don't try to flank you with them. It's more like an, an accident than anything else. Yeah, so they wind up being more for player use than for enemy use. Mm -hmm. The boss is hiding out in that central area there. Like, in return to form for Descent 1 and 2, the uh, final boss fight is in a arena that's ringed, that has stuff in a ring around it, basically. I mean, I guess now that we don't have guided missiles anymore, it would be okay to let us peek in that arena before we went in there. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, I guess they just don't want to avoid giving away the surprise. Final boss is your mom! <laughs> oh no, it's evil Alex Warden from an alternate timeline! <laughs> Okay, that guy teleported. Where'd he go? Didn't suspect a thing. No. Nope. Glorious. Well, after all of that, they are only machines. You have nothing to fight for. Well, not, it's not true, uh, Juno Cantor, Cantor Juno, Sovereign, whatever you are. Uh, I have plenty to fight for, like uh, my XP counter to go up, or to uh, punch a boss fight in the face. Control. No, that's a different game entirely. Listen, somewhere in this facility is a chair, and we're going to sit on it. So many 
teleporters. Oh. Well, thankfully, they do seem to be pretty consistent as far as um, if A is connected to B, then B is connected to A. Yeah, that is true. Like when you go through a teleporter, if you go back through it, you will come on the exact, or you will come back out in the same spot. So, um, this came out in 2018. One feature in a lot of games that more or less take place on a flat plane. Uh, with minor verticality, have a breadcrumb function on the map where you see where you were recently. Uh, but this doesn't seem to have that, and I keep wonder if that would be useful or confusing in a fully six degrees of freedom type game. That might help to kind of do that automatically, because part of the reason that Barry John isn't using his markers, even though I keep reminding him to, is that you have to actually press a key to use them, whereas uh, um, that kind of automatic function would just work automatically. Right. Look, I'm trying to get the no guide bot, uh, or no hollow guide uh, achievement, but <laughs> unfortunately, I screw that up at some point and I accidentally hit the uh, hollow guide button and it tells me nope you're away from the Iberia you can't use the hollow guide and it locks me out of the achievement uh, in this what? Run. even though you didn't use it? because I hit the button well, that's, boo. that's terrible boo that's like, boo this individual that's like you know losing your pacifist uh, run because you pulled out your sword but didn't actually hit anyone with it yeah, or because you, like, punched thin air. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why... Or you change why... your uh, stance from uh, peaceful to combative, or whatever. Yeah, for an example of the opposite, uh, Resident Evil Village came out not too long ago, uh, as if this recording. Uh... One of the challenge achievements is don't fire your gun a certain number of times, but there are some puzzles which require firing your gun, and it does not count those. I don't know how it keeps track of that. Maybe it's just like the achievement tracker goes offline when you're in a puzzle room, but either way, that was a surprising amount of mercy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And unfortunately, the fusion beam going through didn't hit the uh, uh, loot crate, loot box behind it. So you have to blow up all of those purple orbs, or are those the loot crate orbs? They're the loot crate orbs. Okay, alright. I was confusing them with the orbs you need to use to blow up to get to the boss. So, so far, it looks like this level hasn't really um, made the geometry any more complicated. It's just kind of bumped up the enemy count a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's a boss fight level, so in a way, the real draw, or the real challenge is going to be the boss fight. Oh yeah, you got to pick up more uh, Black Sharks. I mean, whatever they were renamed to in this game. Vortex. So you've got to figure out how to deal with all these um, enemies, whereas um, not uh, jumping too heavily to use your heaviest missiles on them. Yeah, we haven't seen any of those really big rooms yet either. Like, ones that are wide open and have, like, all three of the dimensions have some measurement to them. Usually we've seen big flat rooms like this one that we're in now. Yeah, I remember on the very old computers, the giant wide open rooms would sometimes make your computer chug, you know, back when you had a 486, but, uh... <laughs> oh, 480k of memory ought to be enough for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so now comes the part where I'm trying to figure out where the heck is that last, uh, thing?
And so I'm looking at the map going, okay, I see the yellow bars showing. I haven't seen that area yet. I need to go places and do things and go, oh, hey, an enemy. That's always a good sign. Mitt, at least they blow up into nice little sparkles when you kill them. Oh, yeah. Nope, that's back to the front of this level. Go back. Nope, not that way, bear. Not that way past me. <sighs> past me was an idiot sometimes. <laughs> that's the path to wisdom, realizing that. Well, new alien environments, same difficulties of navigating the map. <laughs> I would prefer it if this map was at least color-coded, you know, but then that would require the environments to have different color schemes. <laughs> yeah, that's the other problem with doing away with the uh, red, uh, blue, yellow uh, key system, is uh, you don't get that uh, division of sectorage uh, anymore either. It all comes down to these uh, force fields and um, doors and just physical proximity. Uh, wow, that time bomb lasted a while. That's because I actually fired off two of them. Ah, okay. Oh. So it took longer perceptually for the second one to explode because we were under the influence of the first? Yep. Also, I ran out of energy. Yeah, uh -oh. you're, you're running dry. You've got for the bullets, first? but... For the second time in my entire mega thread of the descent El of the descent games, I have run out of energy and I've been reduced to using kinetic weapons. I'm honestly kind of surprised it didn't happen sooner on a few of those other descent levels that are run you really dry on supplies or energy recharge centers. But um, I mean, you got through uh, what was it? Um, the I wish I had more light level, just fine. So I guess you did okay. Yeah. I was just checking out a moment there. Somebody in one of the YouTube comments said that if you stayed by one of those uh, uh, location, one of those uh, cores, it would recharge you just a little bit. And I'm like, I think, well, does it have to be an active core or a shot up core or nope? Turns out it didn't quite work. Yeah, maybe a maybe a power up drifted into them from behind. I mean, I did see that you went to the energy recharge center instead of grabbing all those pickups, but I suppose it's because you wanted to go over 100 energy. Yeah. Yes, the pro strat. And I now have 22 out of 10 vortices. What am I going to do? Excellent. So still the worst heavy weapon. Still the worst missile weapon in the game. I mean, yes, it's a... There we go. Oh, and an overdrive. <laughs> wow, because why that's not? a lot of missile pods. Yeah. Well, considering you can get 240 grand total with your with the right upgrade to it. Now, that was that done. I gotta find that last core. So, uh, the final Sovereign hasn't been taunting us too much past the first 5 or 10 minutes of this level. I guess that's another thing you could have been doing with those markers, is you could have dropped one by every single core that you already activated, so you could see them on the map, and that way you could just fly away from everything that you already marked, and hopefully run into the last core that way. That's certainly one option. But then again, like, eh, nobody has ever accused me of being the best Descent player ever. Well, it's not like we can actually backseat you, because this is a recording that we are commenting over. <laughs> you can't change the past. You can only create new timelines. We're only we're only playing Monday morning quarterback with all of this, you know. amazes me how certain games have different takes on the part blue, part golden orange uh, color scheme. For example, here it makes it look like a, a rave, uh, but just 
sweep the colors very slightly and shift the purple one more blue, and you have Vagrant Story, which uh, looks very different to this. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's uh, complementary colors. You know that there there's been huge analysis posts about how you see that all the time in these Hollywood movie posters or scenes of just like. Just, just slap on some blue background and some orange foreground. Instant contrast. So it took me a little while to figure out what, I, what was going on. It was, it was that one, you actually have to go through this one portal because it leads to a room that you can't otherwise access. So this section right here is just disconnected from the rest of the maze entirely. Hold on a second here. Uh, it's not disconnected from the rest of the maze, it's just that when I hit this last core to blow it up, uh, it will turn or will activate all these doors that have been, uh, like that door there below the teleporter. Ah, and they're full of enemies. But once I blow, it'll turn on the doors there, but no, this, it opens up the uh, so level. Are you afraid? So now I can go out. Us. We can help you. Oh, shut up. There, hit, there hits a point of diminishing returns, you know? Logarithmic scaling. It just stops mattering after, like, the seventh zero, you know? <laughs> yeah. Whether we're, like, ten million light years away or one billion light years away, stops really mattering so much. Mm -hmm. Not my mom showed in. <laughs> Honestly, I would prefer Shodan at this point. Shodan doesn't hide the f her contempt from you, even when she's pretending that you're working with her. Sorry, just figuring out the best way to get into the central boss fight room. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like, um, even though we got told obliquely by uh, Cantor slash Juno in that opening spiel that they're planning on taking these alien robots through the magic door and um, presumably into our solar system. You know, unfortunately, due to the constraints of our medium, uh, we don't get to see any of that. So, like, we have no way of knowing whether they were making that all up or not. Orton, your story ends here. So, behold the final fight of the game, the Stratolustar. And yes, I knocked about a quarter of its health off before it was a before it finished spawning in. But uh, is it is it short teleporting all over the place? It is short teleporting and it's firing off one of its attacks is to release two uh, seeker missiles. The homing enemy type. Delusion. Uh, so it took me about oh oh god it took me about a half an hour's worth of practice in trying to finally get through this fight, and I figured the best way to deal a lot of damage to this guy at a point in time was to hit it when it's firing off the Seekers and catch them, catch him in his own basic explosion radius for them. Yeah, that's true. Um, we abide in the walls around you. We miss out on a huge opportunity to have the walls just turn into enemies, like the t wall tiles flying off and attacking you. Yeah, like, make it look... What do you think it says, Legend of Zelda? I was gonna say the end boss of uh, Zone of Enders 2, where the wall tiles are coming off and becoming wings for, for him. Hey, quality over quantity. Hollow <laughs> vessel. Sorry, just doing a quick map here, because I'm told uh, there's supposed to be a secret room in this area, and I'm like, can I find it? Do I find it? What am I doing? Do you need more Vortex missiles at this point? No, but the Vortex missiles are good at uh, catching the uh, Seeker weapons, or the Seeking uh, enemies. So, on occasion, I'll, f like, the idea is, you know, fire them off, and, uh, it, you know... And then the enemies get caught. I tried that at one point. Are those bouncing fusion shots? No, they're not bouncing. Oh. Whoa, that took a chunk out of you. Yes, but it took a bigger chunk out of him, and that's the important part. And time to cheese it. <laughs> <laughs> 
cannot be destroyed. Ah, but I can destroy all your stuff. Yes, yes, show us your true form. And me just grabbing a couple things before I leave. I made that look easy. Trust me, it's not. That does look like, um, you know, if you're like a, a half a second too late of dodging out of the way, you take a lot of damage. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. So, that was level 15. Join me next time when we go back to Ymir and we end this.